How's it going guys? Today I'm going to show you how I engineered this Leco Spotlight which can be used on any Bowens mount lighting fixture. Now first, what is a Leco? Spelled L-E-K-O, it stands for Light Emitting Cool Object. Just kidding. Leco is an abbreviation of the brand name Leco Light, which creates these types of lights. You most often see Leco's be used in theatrical stage lighting, and essentially it's just a very direct spotlight. It uses this lens to focus the light on a very specific area. Now what I've engineered here is kind of primitive as you're not able to change the actual diameter of the light and the focus is constant. There also usually are blades that sit between the actual light source and the lens and those help for further shaping the light. I did not implement that in my design. Now the reason why I went through all the trouble to do this is out of a necessity for a Leco type of light for a feature length documentary that I am currently working on. I already own this Aperture 300D Mark II, which is a fantastic light, and that comes with this cone with the Bowens mount, which somewhat shapes the light in a general direction, but it's just like all over the place. What I had in mind for this sequence of shots was a very hard directional light. In gymnastics, you use chalk, which is very cinematic if you backlight it and have a very black background with the white chalk lighting up. It looks super awesome, but you need a very, very hard light in order to make that appear. I have to tell you, I am very impressed with this outcome, and it only required pieces I already had laying around my studio. So Aperture, the company that designs this light, actually sells something similar to this. It's the Aperture Spotlight, and you can actually swap out the different lenses. So there's a 19 degree, 26 degree, and 36 degree. And this has all the features of being able to focus it, it has blades to cut the light, and it only costs $500. It's literally like a crappy piece of glass that didn't make it to the level of being a lens for a camera, so it's just a lens for a light. The durability of the Aperture One is going to be a lot better than what I have designed, and you're not going to have as many issues as the one that I have designed. But in the end, the outcome you get is fairly similar. The only difference is if you were to buy all the pieces for my design, it costs you around 30 bucks. So I have had these big old lenses sitting around my studio for several years after we disassembled a super boomer TV that used these lenses to project the different colors of light onto the screen. It's a very old TV and it got scrapped, but I kept these big lenses because I figured I might have a use for them one day. Turns out these work perfect for this application. Now I looked it up on eBay and there are quite a few of these for sale and they're generally around 30 bucks. Now I had a little bit of trouble finding exactly what you call this lens and there's a sticker on this one that says X-ray critical part. So if you search on eBay, X-ray critical part lens, this will pop up and you're able to do this. So for the actual design, I took the Bowens mount cone, which I haven't really ever used with the light, but it actually has a little foam insert and I decided I wanted to keep that. So I traced the outline of that foam insert that's perfectly cut to the inside diameter, traced that onto some black foam I also already had laying around, cut that out, and then I traced the inside diameter of this lens and cut that out. I slid the lens inside, put some tape on that. Now I knew that heat was going to be an issue here because these lights get pretty hot. So I put some white gaff tape on the inside of the lens where it's black, thinking that, you know, white would absorb less heat energy than the black would, so I shouldn't really have a problem. That was good in thought, but the lens melted. Wow. I only had it on for like a few minutes at a time while I was testing it and then I turned it off just because I wanted to make sure this didn't happen and then I 
took it apart and saw that this happened. Okay. Well, so then I went back to the drawing board and I figured I should probably include some ventilation because this is a completely enclosed with foam and metal on the front of this light where it gets super, super hot. Not the best thinking on the first design. So then I cut some holes around the edges of the foam and then I even um, designed this uh, little battery powered fan with a black garbage bag that vents the fan current into one of the holes and then the other three holes act as an exhaust vent. I prayed that this would fix the issue and it did. I shot with this for about four hours doing that gymnastics segment and I only set the power to uh, around 50%. That's all I really needed. This is a very strong light and no melting of this light, so. There was a little bit of light leak going to the sides and I wanted to make sure this was as hard of a light as possible uh, so that we don't have any light spill. So I cut out of some black fabric. I also just had laying around the studio conveniently, cut that out and then uh, shaped that around the actual front of the lens and this prevented any of that light spill. If you decide to engineer one of these Leco lights like this, I definitely would say you should just keep in mind Put some ventilation in there because it gets super super hot alternatively if you just want to spend the 500 bucks and get the real one you're not going to have all the issues of it looking kind of ghetto with a clip-on fan venting yeah but i'm pretty happy with the outcome of this guy that's going to wrap it up for this quick diy tutorial if you're interested in filmmaking lighting cameras and all this fun stuff i'd recommend subscribing thank you all for watching and as always, don't forget to keep it pro. Also look out for the feature-length documentary Losing Grip, coming soon.